Welcome to Monday Markers, a uh, program of the Battle of Homestead Foundation. Today I'm going to talk about the 1919 steel strike, and particularly uh, the, you, Im, the centrality of immigrants and of African Americans in the story, and particularly about the questions of American identity that were raised a century ago. A bitter labor struggle in the steel industry challenged a system of total control over an immigrant workforce on the job that was supported by the suppression of civil liberties in mill towns and coal patches. It was defeated, the strike was defeated by a press that incited vicious anti-immigrant, anti-foreign sentiment combined with cynical and devastating manipulation of racism and use of black strike breakers uh, that raised issues that remain with us today. Who is an American and what is an American? At the end of the First World War, the rapid shrinking of production and employment increased the stark contradictions of capitalism. A vast accumulation of wealth at the top of society rested uneasily on masses of workers who faced inflated prices, wage stagnation, and increasing unemployment. Repression in the name of Americanism and patriotism was directed against a wide spectrum of voices who were calling for peace in a more just and more egalitarian society. Corporate interests undermined a free press by extending their control over once independent sources of information in Pittsburgh, the press was virtually totally anti-foreign born, ignoring the terrible hours and working conditions that steelworkers faced, while also forgetting the contribution that immigrants had made to the war effort. This was a war in defense of democracy and the rule of law. And then free speech and civil liberties were brutally suppressed in the coal fields and industrial valleys of Pennsylvania. U.S. Steel controls up to 25,000 armed deputies in the Pittsburgh region. Intense repression by privately controlled forces masquerading as public law and order provoked underground resistance and stirred intense debate about the nature of American democracy. The steel strike in the Mon Valley uh, was called the Hunky Strike, since Slavic steel immigrant workers were at the heart of that struggle. The massive flow of immigration that fed the rapid industrial expansion after the American Civil War brought Allegheny County in 1910 to its peak foreign-born population of 50%, including 68% of the steel employment in the region. By 1920, the United States became also an urban society, a majority urban society for the first time. So while Eastern and Southern European immigration slowed dramatically during World War I and then radically was restricted by 1924 immigration laws, African-American migration to the Northern industrial areas accelerated during World War I because of the uh, bull weevil infestation of the cotton crops and the repression of Jim Crow uh, prejudice and racism. The strike in Pittsburgh was broken by the enormous power of the steel corporations over politics and the community. Uh, as Mother Jones, who was very much a part of this, and we'll talk about her and Fanny Sullins next week, said 
Tsar Gary, head of the U.S. Steel Corporation, met his workers as the, is the customary way with tyrants. He could not shoot him down as Tsar Nicholas did when petitioned by his peasants, but he ordered forth his two faithful generals, fear and starvation, one to clutch at the worker's throat and the other at his stomach and the stomach of his children. Thomas Bell, or Thomas Belichick, this great immigrant novel, Out of This Furnace, expressed a deep immigrant love and longing for American ideals that emerged particularly in his engagement, deep engagement in the struggle for unionism and workers' rights in the steel industry. He said, it wasn't where you were born or how you spelled your name or where your father had come from. It was the way you thought and felt about certain things, about freedom of speech and the equality of men and the importance of having one law, the same law for rich or poor, for people you liked and the people you didn't like. Who is an American and what is an American? These were sharply contested issues in the 1919 strike and a century later, they are still with us. Who is an American? That question was answered by the blood of nearly 700,000 dead in our civil war that abolished legal slavery, recognized birthright citizenship, asserted equal protection of the law to all citizens, and protected the sacred right to vote without regard to race or color. These are our ideals. But what is an American? That question, on the other hand, goes to the question of meaning and commitment. Is an American someone who has loyalty to a set of ideals, including freedom of speech, assembly, and religion, that strives to extend the blessings of freedom and justice to all, who pledges allegiance to a government that provides for the common defense and promotes the general welfare? Or, as some might say, does being an American come wrapped in an imperial flag demanding unregulated private control of the nation's wealth and lifeblood and the use of its military to pursue ambitions of expansion and domination at home and abroad? That question, what is an American, concerns meaning and commitment. What do we stand for? Where are we going? With love or with hate? Those questions starkly face us in the 2020 election tomorrow and moving forward in this country. Our very lives, our, those of our children, grandchildren, and on depend on the answer.